Hello, everyone. Welcome. As you guys are coming in, um, I always love just at the beginning of a brand new webinar, um, especially the beginning of the season. If you want to introduce yourself in the chat, um, that would be great. And we'll get started in um, a second or so. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and get started. Um, welcome everyone to the Getting Started webinar for 2023 Give Local NRV. My name is Lisa. Um, I am the Senior Community Engagement Manager here at Mighty Cause. And we also have Lindsay here from the Community Foundation of New River Valley. Um, Lindsay, if you want to introduce yourself, share a couple words. Hey everyone, it's good to be with all of you today. Um, so I'm the assistant director here at the Community Foundation and I'm the point person for Give Local at the foundation. But of course, Jess and Laura are my wonderful teammates. They're on the call as well and uh, they are seasoned Giving Day veterans um, here to help too. Awesome. So to go over today's agenda for the webinar, we're first gonna be going over um, some just basics about this year's event an overview on giving days if you are brand new to participating in any particular giving day, um, let alone give local NRV, what your organization needs to do this year. So whether you are brand new or returning back, um, if this is your second or third year participating, some platform overview and features. There are a couple of new things that we've changed on the site. So we'll be going over some of those. And then at the very end, we'll be going over any questions and answers. Um, so you can use the um, questions tool on your Zoom control panel um, to ask any questions throughout the webinar that you'll have and we'll answer them at the end. Um, Lindsay, do you have anything you wanna add as well? Um, just that we have, uh captions enabled for this webinar. So if folks need captions for whatever reason we have, you can find those at the bottom of your Zoom screen. It says show captions or hide captions and they'll pop up uh, to assist you if you need them. Awesome. Um, so some basics uh, of the event this year. I don't know, Lindsay, if you wanna go through some of the basics for this year's event. Sure thing. Um, so as I mentioned, I'm the primary contact for Give Local, and my, my goal is to help make sure that everyone has a successful day. So just um, I'll always uh, kind of ring this bell of if you want to meet and strategize about your fundraising or communication plans, I'd love to connect. If you need assistance learning more about how to use the platform um, after this webinar, I would be glad to sit down with you and show you the ropes. So here to answer any question, big or small. And so at the Community Foundation, part of our mission is to support all of you and uplift the important work that you do for our community. And one of the ways we do that is through the Give Local platform. And the signature event for this platform is Giving Day. And we're excited because this year is our 10 year anniversary. And since 2014, we've raised $2.6 million. And when I say we, I mean the dozens of nonprofits and hundreds of donors who have engaged in this process it's been an extraordinary community-wide effort, and we're excited to see what we can do again this year. And for those of you who have been around for a while, you might remember that we started off with raising nearly $40,000 in 2014. And where we are now, we're raising half a million dollars um, for the past few years. So it's, our impact is pretty incredible, and it's a testament to how caring our community is and how many great nonprofits are in our community. So um, for those of you who are new and are thinking about registering for Give, Giving Day, here's um, part of what makes this day special is that your gift goes farther on Giving Day than other days of the year because the Community Foundation offers grants and prizes. And some of the stuff that I'll chat about now, we'll get into more detail later, but one to share this in overview. If you're on the fence about participating, we would love for you to join us. The Community Foundation does a lot of work to publicize and market the event, so you're able to leverage that um, marketing opportunity through us. And then we have um, grants and prizes throughout the day and the early giving period, which starts on June 1st. And that's when your 
totals start to go up in terms of donors and gifts, and you are in the running for, for um, different grants and prizes, and those will be announced in April. And with our 10th anniversary, we have some special things in the work works that we're really excited about. Um, and so while this is a primarily online event, uh, checks or cash can be entered into the system as offline donations. Um, and another thing that we're excited about this year is we're switching things up a little bit with our format. We're going to do a noon to noon format. So uh, all 10 years that we've offered this event, it's been a 24 hour event. And this year, we're going to kick it off Wednesday, June 28th at noon, and it'll end the following day on the 29th at noon. And we're excited about that format for a few different reasons. Um, one obvious one might be that we'll all be awake for the launch time, um, which will be great. So it will build momentum in a different way. So we're excited to see what we can do with that new format and what you all can do. Um, so I can turn it back over to you, Lisa. Um, we have, she has a lot to share, and including um, an exciting new feature that we're gonna have this year that you all can use if you'd like um, involving text to give. Yes, that's one of the features that um, all organizations participating in Give Local NRV will have access to. As Lindsay mentioned, um, in order to participate, registration is required. Um, and um, the event will start at noon this year. Oops. So uh, for those of you who have not participated in a giving day before, some of the common questions we get at Mighty Cause are, well, what exactly is a giving day and why should I participate? Well, giving days are typically just a, a day or multiple days of giving that are focused on a specific community or cause. Um, they're typically organized, the hosts like the community foundation here, um, and they're typically held online and are created to build momentum for the organizations that are within the community or cause that it's trying to build momentum for. So how do giving days typically work? Um, typically, there is a short time frame, again, to build that um, call to action, um, an incentive to donors to make their donation during that short time frame in order to raise funds for your um, organization. And since you are fundraising as a community, it helps spread awareness about your organization and your work within your larger community. Um, and you're working collectively, you know, although there are prizes and there's a competitive aspect to it, um, you're still working co collectively to spread the mission about all of the good work that you guys do in your community. And this way, you're also engaging with local businesses, um, you know, local media, your overall community in general. So what are a couple of action items that you need to do in order to participate this year? As mentioned, you do need to um, complete a registration form. The registration form needs to be completed by May 25th. Um, it's a really easy form that you can find right on the website, givelocalnrv.org. Uh, if you are a 501c3 uh, organization, there is already an organization page on the platform. So all you would do is need um, access to it as an administrator and begin um, customizing your organization page. There's a new uh, nonprofit toolkit available that has a lot of support um, articles, templates, um, images, etc. So you can begin creating all of your messaging that you want to share on social media, in your emails, and then you can begin talking to your donors or your network about Give Local NRV. One thing we'll also be talking about, and we'll be talking about a little bit more in the next webinar as well, is matching grants. Matching grants are a great strategic tool in order to, um, one, motivate donors to give on Give Local NRV, but they're also a really great strategy for prizes. Um, and also peer-to-peer um, -peer fundraising is another great strategy to motivate donors or individuals to get involved with Give Local NRV in your organization and again, help raise more, more money and um, win prizes. So there's a lot of things that, um, there's a lot of different types of campaigns that you can create related to Give Local NRV, but we'll, for this webinar, we'll just be talking about the basics and the platform. So how to log in and register. 
Uh, so if you haven't used the site before, or maybe you haven't used the site since last year, uh, to log in, uh, there is a log in to, um, icon in the top right corner. If you go to lo givelocalnrv.org, and you'll be able to log in. If you've never logged in before, you can sign up with your email and create a password. Once you've logged in, then right in the menu, as you see in the screenshot here, there's a register call to action, um, and you can just click that and then start the registration process. Um, as well, once you're logged in, and if you are already an administrator, you'll then be able to go to your organization page and start customizing your page as we've talked about. And Lisa, I'll jump in um, mm -hmm. uh, for folks. Um, and just as a re reminder, whether you've participated before or you're, this is your first year, uh, please register. And so um, the reason why we ask people to register again each year, it's so we know that you want to actively participate this year and we have your most up-to-date information. So just like Lisa said, um, we have um, all the administrators on the account who can um, log in and, and see all your information so we know who to contact and reach out to. Um, and we know um, information about your organization, like your budget size, which helps us sort you into categories for the grants and prizes. So just want to shout that out that um, whether you're new or you're returning, uh, please register. Yes. Um, and the registration process should, the form, it should only take a minute or so. Um, it's not a difficult process. When you actually are logged in and you go to the registration form, you'll see um, basically uh, the ability to either search your organization or if you're already an administrator, you can select your organization from here. Once you've selected it, you then complete, um, as Lindsay mentioned, the questions that are on the form. And then once you um, submit it, it'll be reviewed and then uh, approved. Um, and you have a good amount of time to complete this. So until May 25th, um, on your, if you're an ad administrator on your organization page, you can see if you've completed this or not. One way I also always say is that if you've received an email that says you're approved, then you're approved. Um, so if you haven't received an email that you are not approved to participate, then you wanna make sure that you've completed the form. Um, and of course, if you have any questions about your status, you can always reach out to the Mighty Cause support team. We're more than happy to take a look and um, confirm your current status. All right, so we're going to be going over customizing your organization profile. So this is probably one of the most important parts of after you've completed registration, going in and setting up your page. Uh, so if you are brand new to the platform, I'm going to be just going a quick overview of the dashboard that's available to you as an administrator. If you're returning, this is just a refresher. So on your organization dashboard. So again, you will only see this if you are an administrator that's logged in. Uh, the overview will give you just a quick look into uh, if you've completed your to-do list, your registration status, and it'll give you some quick metrics based off um, 30 the last 30 days um, of your organization on the platform. If you click organization page, that's where you can actually customize your profile. So what donors will see when they go to your page. Fundraising tools is where you can find any um, of those strategic fundraising tools that you may want to utilize like peer to peer fundraising, matching grants and also text to give, which we'll go through in a second. Reports is where you'll be able to find your donation reporting. So if you want to see who gave, when they gave, et cetera, you'll find that all in reports. Checkout is where you can customize the checkout experience. So the actual donation form, so the donation amounts that are suggested, uh, the thank you message and the receipt message that comes up, that can all be done through checkout. And then settings is where you can um, control or update any administrators, your uh, EFT, a direct deposit information, um, your legal mailing address, et cetera. It's all of those miscellaneous settings that um, you want to handle on the back end. So when you select your organization profile um, to update or to um, 
start editing, um, you want to make sure that you're customizing it to also match your organization's branding. Uh, there's a theme color that you can set. Um, so you can set it to match the, you know, the color of your organization, what's on your website. At the very top, as you'll see right now um, on the screenshot and to the right, um, there is a logo and a banner image behind that. So the logo is a one-to-one -one aspect ratio. What that means is that it has to be a square image. Um, so if it is rectangular, um, that means that the image will be cropped to only fit a square box. So if you are trying to fit in a logo that is not a square, just be cognizant that it will be cropped. Um, typically, Facebook has the similar... Um, image parameters. So typically organizations that are having trouble finding a square image, I recommend checking what your Facebook Facebook logo is because that will typically be a square image. Um, otherwise, you can use tools like Canva to um, basically add white space around your image if it is rectangular um, so that it can fit into a white box. Um, if you have any issues or questions about your logo, you can feel free to reach out to our support team. We're more than happy to help you. So in addition, the, there's a banner image behind that logo image. That banner image is just meant to kind of blend into the background. So we typically recommend not to have any text in that banner image. It's really just a meant you know, think of it as a background image that is rectangular. And also one reason we recommend not to have any text on there is because it is mobile responsive. So what that means is that depending on the screen size that is um, looking at those images, um, it's going to, the formatting may change a little bit. So again, I would think of it as more of a background image rather than a, a, a focal point to have text on. Um, as same thing with logo, if you're struggling with your back banner image, feel free to reach out to us. You can also add a filter color or string to your background if you have an image that is very, um, you know, is very bright and it's kind of contrasting with your logo. You can use a filter color to make that more opaque if you need that. Um, So one thing that will be occurring this year before the event is we will be updating everyone's um, fundraising metrics automatically for them this year. So you don't have to worry about resetting or setting up the date that the metrics on your organization page when they should start calculating by. For context, for those who are brand new to the platform, on your organization page, there is a fundraising thermometer, as you see here, um, and you can add a goal as you see here, or edit the goal if you've already had a goal in place. Um, but the date that it's calculating metrics by, if you haven't used the platform in a year or if you've never used it, it's probably set to an older date. So what we'll be doing is automatically for everyone, we'll be resetting the date so that it's counting donations um, from June 1st when donations will start counting for Give Local NRV. So you don't have to worry about that. The only thing that you want to make sure that you do, as you see here, is just adding a goal or updating that goal amount and um, updating the metrics we'll be handling on our end. Um, and the goal amount, as you see, you can update it by just clicking the uh, pencil icon next to that thermometer on your page. If you don't see a pencil icon, you don't see a thermometer, you just have to enable it by clicking, there's a plus icon. And so that will enable it and then you can add a goal amount. So underneath your goal uh, or thermometer, uh, there is an inline text editor where you can add uh, information and description about your organization. So this inline text editor, this is your chance to tell your story about your organization. If you're a returning nonprofit, we always recommend rereading what you have listed there and updating it to match this year. Um, we always recommend to also talk about what were the goals um, that you talked about last year, adding what were you able to reach from the fundraising that you received from last year's Give Local NRV. Maybe you were your goal was to, you know, feed a hundred people. 
Did you accomplish that goal? What happened with the money that you received from last year's Give Local NRV? And what are your goals this year? What is the impact you're looking to make in the community for this year? Those are all really great talking points to include in your about section, because again, that's what donors will see on their page when they want to know more information about your organization or why you're fundraising for Give Local NRV. So in your inline text editor, everyone has just a general about section. That's where you can add all of that text. You also have a second custom tab. So in this screenshot, as you see on the right, they use their custom tab to have a area where they can talk about their staff, but you can make this whatever you want. You can title it differently. You know, you could say live events. If you have tons of live events that you want to share information about, you can talk about um, if there's a specific program, you know, underneath your organization, you want to shed specific light on. You can make that whatever you want. It's just an additional area that you can utilize. Um, and if you don't want to utilize it, you can also just um, not enable that and that won't be seen to donors. Um, so within this inline text editor, as you see, you can add different um, colors, you can bold, um, but you can also add videos and images on here. If you are looking to add a video, it does have to be already embedded onto another site, so meaning either Vimeo or YouTube. And then you can embed it as you see again in this screenshot right here, where you can add the video right on here. But it, since this um, this year, the event is starting at noon, some of you may be wanting to do a kickoff event or a wind down at, you know, on the 29th, um, you know, maybe it's an opportunity to add a live, a YouTube live stream or a Facebook live stream on here for those who can't make it to maybe a live event that you're having, or if you're not doing a live event, if you're doing something virtual, this is a really, really great opportunity, again, to kind of anywhere that donors are to put what you're doing on there so that they can um, keep track and um, be in the know. And Lisa, I'll add um, mm -hmm. what I've advised people to do in terms of what to write on that page. Um, I, I would say a few different things. Make sure you have your mission in some form. It doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, copy and pasted what your mission is, but it can be, but explain what your purpose is um, in case there's folks who are as familiar with your work as your close donors and friends and talk about what a donation can do. So say if you have a, a goal of $4,000, the odds that you pick that randomly, um, I mean, maybe, and, and that's that's fine, but you might have a strategy behind it. Maybe you want to buy something new for the, the kitchen that you work in, um, or you need repairs for a van or something like that. What does that represent? Um, and having something tangible to connect what you're, you're trying to raise money for can be really helpful to donors. Um, and you can also help accomplish that with the photos and videos that you were talking about but really telling a story about um, what uh, what that goal represents. And then what, if you can kind of break it down, down into smaller pieces, what would a $25 gift represent? What would $100 represent? And, and showing the power of uh, a few dozen people coming together to donate to you what that can do. So that's what I suggest to folks um, in terms of what kind of content they, what, to put there. Um, is there anything else that you would add to kind of make something eye-catching? I, I think that's a really good um, point, Lindsay, in terms of um, making it tangible, the donation amount. That's what we've seen is really has been really successful for a lot of organizations is when you make it something tangible, and we'll talk about this a little bit in the checkout flow section in regards to your donation form, but when it's something tangible that, you know, $25, you know, sponsors a, a, a student school supplies, etc. Um, it not only incentivizes people to give, but it also could incentivize people to give more if they see that, oh, I was just intending to give $10, but I see if I just increase my donation by $15 to $25, it sponsors a student and their school supplies. So um, having that tangible is really helpful in terms of, um, you know, getting across the impact that you guys are trying to make in, in getting to your goal. Um, in terms of other things to add on here, um, some of the cool things that I've seen other organizations do in addition to just videos or um, 
of photos is infographics. Um, some have used Canva to create infographics if they wanted to really drill down, again, a specific, um, you know, you know, a part of their organization or mission that may be a complicated, you know, they're trying to clean water and they're trying to explain, um, you know, the process or they're trying to break down exactly, as I mentioned, just all of the, the what $25 does. Um, Eye-catching infographics has been really helpful, um, I think, for a lot of organizations and getting donors' attentions um, on there. Yeah, agreed. And um, one more thing that I'll add is any numbers that you can include, um, trying to have a balance between numbers and narrative. So what I mean by that is if you served 500 kids last year through your back, pro back program, that's a really impactful um, stat to have on your page. So if you have things like that to share, please share them. But then also it's helpful to have context of a narrative. And of course, yeah, each organization is different in terms of what details you can share. But if you can share a quote from a participant um, and make it anonymous, if that's um, appropriate, or um, someone's story, I think we all really connect to that. So there's a lot that you can do um, yeah, on this page and, and through any social media and email that you're doing as well. Yeah, that's a really good point. So uh, as we kind of were just talking about integrating media and social to your um, organization page, um, peer-to-peer -peer fundraising is something that is available to you on the platform. So meaning if any individual wants to support your organization and have their own fundraiser, um, they can do so and they can create a fundraiser for your nonprofit. We've seen a lot of um, in the past, like a very popular one is board of directors coming together and creating their own fundraising pages um, to support um, organizations on the platform. So there is a space on here where you can feature specific campaigns. Um, additionally, outside of just peer to peer fundraising, if there is a specific fund or program that you want to have a dedicated fundraising page separately for, you can create a separate fundraising page for it and highlight it as your kind of featured campaign. On your organization page, you can um, connect to your Instagram gallery or your Facebook gallery. So meaning anytime you're posting on Facebook or Instagram, then your organization um, page will be showing that feed. So you don't have to be updating two places at the same time. It'll just be automatically connecting. One of the new things that we've added this year and we're really excited about is a giving activity feed. Um, so this is something that organizations have asked us for a long time and we've finally been able to add it to the platform. So this allows you the opportunity to enable a section where donors can see their gift um, and their amount right on the page. So any donors that want that recognition right on your organization page, they'll be able to see it. Uh, if a donor during the checkout form um, chooses to be anonymous, that information will not be displayed on a giving activity. It will tell, it will say, you know, anonymous gave, et cetera. Or if they choose their amount to be anonymous, that will also be anonymous. Um, but that is something that you can enable now on your organization page that we're really excited about. That's such a wonderful feature, Lisa, and um, a, suggest a suggestion for folks um, throughout the day, if you see someone come in with it, a gift on your wall, you can send them um, an email or a text if you have that kind of relationship and just say a quick thank you. The system will send an automatic thank you, but sometimes that extra, hey, I, I saw what you did and, and thank you so much um, can uh, be an extra uh, contact that you have with a donor and an extra way to acknowledge them. Yes, definitely. Um, and one thing that's also sometimes it's a little bit hidden um, that can be forgotten, but definitely, especially if you're returning back um, to participating from last year, is optimizing your social share settings. So this can be found in your settings on your organization page, um, in your general settings. So what social sharing refers to is when you share a link of your organization page on Facebook or Twitter, um, there are, you know, on Slack, um, some elsewhere where there is a image that appears and some text. Um, again, if you've shared on Facebook, you know what I'm referring to about image and text populating. Um, 
You just want to make sure that the image and text that you want displayed is updated. So if you've participated the last year, you may have some outdated language that may say 2022. So you just want to go to your general settings and double check that that's updated for this year. Um, so that if anyone's sharing a link to your org page, um, that updated text is shown on your social feeds. And Lisa, I'll just jump in mm -hmm. one, one more time. I saw that we had a question in the chat from Brenda Springer. And um, folks, we'll have time at the end for uh, questions as well. But please feel free to add them into the chat. Um, glad to answer them as we go. So Brenda asks, is it better to have a running mm -hmm. total over the years or just a new goal for 2023? And um, Brenda, I can give my two cents there. And, and Lisa, if you want to add anything, I think um, it's good to have a new goal every year to display at the top for your thermometer um, to show that progress. Um, but uh, I think something that Lisa was talking about was um, uh, putting in kind of the story section of your profile, you might uh, say, you know, through Give Local, we've raised $20,000 over the past four years, and we're hoping to make this our biggest year yet, maybe something like that. But kind of acknowledging your excess in the past um, could be um, a, a powerful and kind of help explain why you have the goal that you have this year. Um, but that's what I would suggest for that. Is there anything you would add there, Lisa? No, I think that's, I think that's great. I think kind of what we've talked about, about in terms of making things tangible, you know, donors really crave transparency and also tangibility, if that's a word. Um, mm -hmm. And so if they're able to see, okay, they're raising this amount of money for these reasons, um, that is much more clear for donors in terms of, I think, just a higher number for the sake of a higher number. Um, they want to really understand, you know, they want to connect with your organization and understand what is the actual goal and impact you're trying to make in the community and how their donation can go towards that, if that makes sense. Yeah, that I, I think that makes a lot of sense of the reasoning behind that number it is can be really powerful. So I hope that answers your question, Brenda. Um, if not, please feel free to add more into the chat or into the Q&A section. Awesome. All right, so we're going to be going over some of the fundraising tools that you will have available on the platform that you can use for your fundraising. So one of them being matching grants. Now, matching grants is a big topic, so we won't get into the weeds right now. We'll go more into the weeds in the next webinar. So if you're interested in general about matching grants, how to secure them, you know, what to do with it, how to set it up. Um, please register for the next webinar or, or watch the recording afterwards. Uh, but through the fundraising tools section on your dashboard, there is a matching grants tool where you can add a matching grant if you have secured one. So this is where you would go if after you have secured a match. So once you have a match and then you want to add it to the platform, this is where you would go. Um, so when you go and enter your match, you'll be able to enter all of your match details. So as I talked about in the next webinar, we'll go more into the weeds about different types of matches you can enter, all that good stuff. Um, so you would enter your details in there and then it will appear on your organization page when the match is set to be active. So let's say that you secure a match today and you enter it in, you can have it start at June 1st. And so it won't appear on your organization page until June 1st. So you could set it up at any point and have it start in the future. Um, so the match can be paid through the platform or offline. You know, that's something for you and the grantor to talk through is what is the best way of making that gift, um, how they should make that gift online. Um, and as I mentioned, um, the the a match notification or match button will kind of appear on your donate button. Um, and at the bottom of your page as well, there will be a, a match tile, which will keep track of how far you are or how close you are to completing your match. So donors can see then, you know, how much further, um, how close you are or further you are away from um, fulfilling or meeting your match. Um, so and that just is... 
I'll, mm -hmm. I'll just reiterate that a match is just an, it can be a really exciting motivator for donors and yes. it can be really fun with messaging. Um, and you can have pre-planned message, say you got a, a $3,000 match and you get halfway there. That's a great email to send out to everyone halfway there to our match. Um, mm -hmm. and, and once it unlocks, and so if you have um, uh, it, it set up where it, uh, uh, when you reach 3000 from outside donors, that the, the $3,000 will unlock and that will show up on your platform. So it's just an exciting thing to show and kind of um, if you're competitive like me and you like, or, you <laughs> or you're someone who, uh, maybe a better way to put it is like, you like to work as a team and showing how you're all coming together to that goal. Um, and, and also demonstrating the power of how people give in a range of ways. So you have one donor who gave this big amount of money, $3,000, but you have these five other donors who gave $5 and they're helping toward that match. And then everyone builds toward it. So it can be a really exciting um, way to um, uh, talk about what you're doing. Yes, it definitely helps with communication in terms of just changing the language that you're sending out so that you don't feel yourself being repetitive. Because I, I, I feel that way at times when participating in giving days of, you know, that same call to action give, but this adds another sense of urgency of saying double your donation, make a larger impact if you give now because your donations being doubled, you know, you're going to help unlock a match, etc. Um, so yeah, it's definitely a really great um, use just in, for communication as well. Um, and as Lindsay said too, for those large donors, maybe if you have an annual large donor that consistently just writes you a check every year, um, this is a great way to have them get involved and make their donation make a larger impact. It's a different way to have them, you know, um, a different relationship they can have with your nonprofit and a different ask that you can ask a donor um, than just, you know, writing a check. Absolutely. And um just to add on there, I think it can be exciting and gratifying for a donor to know that, say it's that $3,000 gift, and it's going to be really $6,000 if you get everyone else to donate, right? So mm -hmm. knowing that you are, um, many donors are, are, we have so many generous donors in the community, but so many people like to see, you know, I'm not the only person who's giving to this organization. Yes. And it's nice to see the tangible effects of that. Like, you know, you're not the only one giving, but seeing the community come together again is really important. And so I, I agree. I think that's a great strategy if you have a donor who writes that check every year. Um, but one thing I want to make sure um, that is clear to everyone is that check has to be received during the early giving period or at, by the end of giving day. So it needs to be um, dated uh, June between June 1st and June 29th and received by you all um, at that time, or it can be uh, done online. But just want to make sure folks know that because um, if you are working with donors now and maybe they want to um, give from a, another funding mechanism outside of a, a checking account, um, they want to give from an investment account or something or a donor advised fund, let them know that um, excited for that donation to come in. But in order for it to count during the giving day period, it has to be G between June 1st and June 29th. And it's it, it's so disappointing when something comes in at, at, on May uh, 31st and we, we can't count it because we just really want that's the spirit of that giving period um, to be when we're receiving funds. So um, just an extra reminder to folks of when those gifts need to show up. Um, and if it comes as a check, you can enter it as an online gift or an offline gift rather. Um, but just want to emphasize that, that uh, in order for those to count, it has to come during that period. Yes, that's definitely something important when you're talking with your grantor about how they want to make their gift to coordinate within that time frame. Um, one of the other tools that or a new tool that you'll have available to you that um, you can find in the fundraising tool section of your dashboard is text to give. Um, so this is a really great useful tool um, if you're planning a live event or even an online event, a virtual event, um, where you're going to have people that want to make a gift. Um, let's say you are at a live event or you have a booth and you want people to, you don't have many computers, you don't want to line, you want something that's really easy for people to make a gift. 
well, they can use text to give to do so. Um, so to utilize text to give, so you would start off by creating a keyword. So keywords should be unique. So let's say, as just an example, you're the American Red Cross. So I might say like um, ARC NRV 23, uh, just as an example, um, just to show that this is American Red Cross's um, Give Local NRV 23 campaign. So after I have my unique keyword um, and I add it to the text to give area, all donors have to do is just text that keyword to 844-844-6844. That's across the board, every nonprofit. That's the same um, number that uh, donors can um, text their, your keyword at. Um, and then once they text that number, they will receive a message back that will direct them to make a gift. Um, so it will provide them a link to make a donation to your organization. So again, it's a really useful and easy thing for donors to use if you are at in person and you want a way for donors to just donate easily and quickly through their um, mobile devices or through their own computer. Um, so one thing to know about text to give so you are not texting donors. That's a common question we get is can I text donors from here? You cannot text donors. This is just a tool available for donors to be able to receive a text. Um, and, te and text the keyword, but receive a text that provides them a direct link to make a donation to your organization. Um, if you're doing, let's say, a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaign, like your board members are um, fundraising for your organization, you can create a keyword for all of their pages so that they can share that with their friends and family. Etc. So the world is your oyster. Um, you can go ahead and test it out if you want to. Um, there's also donations report available. So then you can also see if this is something that if you just want to test it out, you dip your feet in the water and see if this is something that's useful or effective. You can set up a keyword. Um, if you want to supply it to donors, you can then see how many donations you receive from your text. And you can also see how many people actually text the keyword. So you can see the effectiveness of people actually utilizing it and then how many dollars you're actually getting from it. If, um... That's exciting, Lisa. We're looking forward to seeing how people use that function this year. Yes, it's really it's really fun to see um, all the different <laughs> keywords also people create and, and how donors utilize it. So one of the other important things to customize or utilize on the platform through your dashboard is your checkout flow. And this is where you can edit, um, as I mentioned previously, um, your suggested donation amounts, actual form people complete when they go to make their gifts, and also the thank you page and donation receipt message. So for the donation form, we've talked a lot about, um, you know, Clarifying to donors the impact that they can make by giving a donation. Well, this is where you can clarify that by adding one, customizing your suggested donation amounts, but then adding descriptors to that donation amount. So in this example, $40 would then mean 10 pounds of dog food for the Animal Humane Society, or $30 um, helps vaccinate two rescue dogs. So having those really clear descriptors then makes it easier for donors to really understand where their money is going and how they're supporting their or your organization. Um, and as we talked about, you know, for example, if I see, oh, well, for $100, I can transport a whole rescue dog. Maybe instead of vaccinating two rescue dogs, I'm going to help with the transport and make that donation of $100. Within the um, donation um, checkout flow, um, where you can edit these amounts, you can have more than four. We typically just, the minimum is four, but you can add more if that's something that you want to do. You can also set it up where um, monthly donations um, are disabled, or you can set it up where automatically, if you do want to kind of have a very specific recurring donation campaign, you can set it up where monthly donations is the automatic option. Um, in addition to the donation amounts, you can also add a custom question if you have a certain data point that you want to collect. So for example, um, ones that I've seen before uh, have been, um, are you interested in volunteering? Um, 
you know, are you located in this region? It, it can be anything specific to you and your organization and any question that you want to ask a donor. You can also make the question required or optional. So if you're just, you don't want to require a donor to answer it, you can just add it on there so that you're collecting that information. Or if you do want to make it required, for example, you want to collect phone numbers, um, you can add that question on there and make it required. Um, and I'll add, Lisa, um, that uh, I apologize if you already said this, but no, um, the lowest amount that you can have um, go through the platform is five dollars. So just so folks know, um, but yeah, thinking through how to kind of tier it. And if you have those amounts to, to um, associate with a dollar amount, it can be really impactful, just like you said, Lisa. And one other thing that I'll add um, that uh, donors will see as part of their experience on the screen is whether a uh, checkbox, whether or not to include um, money toward fees for the platform. And just to explain what that means, um, and uh, we may, uh, I don't think we quite talked about this in the beginning, but um, how it works with Mighty Cause is Mighty Cause does giving days with folks all over. And so they provide the Give Local platform. They are technical experts. And just hearing from uh, Lisa, she's done this for a long time and just knows the ins and outs of the platform and how to run a great giving day. And so there are our technical partners on here. Um, and then the community foundation team are our local partners. Um, and as you all know. Um, but the, the fees at the bottom, donors can opt out to um, opt out of paying for those fees if they want to. But if they uh, include the fees, um, those help uh, fund the platform um, and, and our, our, our work through the Community Foundation and Mighty Cause. So just to explain um, kind of what donors, donors will see there. Um, not sure if you want to say anything else there, Lisa, but just want to share a little bit more about that donor experience. Yeah, so in terms of the fees, so if a donor chooses to cover the fees for um, an organization, that is tax deductible for them. So that's one of the nice things is that if a donor wants to cover that fee, that's kind of added an add on to their gift. Um, so that's something that they can, you know, tax deduct on their taxes um, in terms of um, their, their gift and their total amount. Um, but otherwise, we found that about like, on average, it's probably more than like 86, 90% of donors choose to cover the fee. So it's not something that we've found um, any like pushback or issue with donors have, and it's become more of an industry standard or amongst other platforms. But if you guys have any questions or run into any issues with that tool, again, feel free to reach out to our support team and we're more than happy to talk through that um, or help answer any further questions. So, All right, so uh, two other sections on your checkout flow is your post checkout. So that's your thank you page and your thank you message on your receipt. Um, so the difference between the two is your thank you page is the page that pops up right after a donor has selected donate, they're submitting their payment, and that's what pops up. And it says, thank you for donating. But then you can add your own language, images, video, call to action that you want. Um, so definitely recommend if you've used the platform or if you've participated last year, make sure that you review this and make sure that this language, images, et cetera, is updated for this year. If you're brand new, this is a great way to, again, personalize um, that thank you message that you want to send them on um, the call to action if you want to maybe direct them to a certain area of your website or if you want to direct them to subscribe to a newsletter this is your opportunity to um, make that call to action to donors um, and there's an inline text editor as you see that you can use to add that information in um, for your thank you message or their your receipt message um, that will be added to your email that's sent out to donors um, on their receipt. It's at the very top. So again, that can be thank you for making your donation and adding that additional call to action of, you know, if you want to learn more, head here to our website or subscribe to our newsletter, et cetera. And I'll share that um, it's uh, this platform is so great in terms of how you can see all these steps 
um, and see the preview that a donor would see. Um, but an extra step that you might want to take is once you have everything or you think you have everything up to date, you might want to do a test gift. Um, and by that, I mean the gift is it, it's um, it, it goes through as an actual gift to your organization. But if you do like uh, if you're already planning on making a gift during giving day, you can make one during the early giving period um, and just kind of see what the donor sees as they go through that process and put yourself in their shoes. And then I found it's just a different way to see any typos or, um, oh, I didn't update my thank you message and that sort of thing. So you could even do five dollars to test it out. Um, or if you're already planning on doing a gift to your organization, uh, doing, do it during the early giving period. But I found that helpful last year and I, I fixed some mistakes that I had made. Yes. Yeah. That's a, that's a, um, a great way of like seeing the whole donor experience. And if for any reason you don't want to make a gift to yourself, there's also a, um, button on the donation receipt that allows you to send yourself a test email. If, you know, for whatever reason, you don't want to make that test gift, but that is also a really great way of making sure that, again, you're seeing exactly what the donor is seeing in terms of the whole process and um, that they're going through. Um, so that kind of actually brings us to the reporting piece is that after a donor makes a gift, where do you see that information? How do you find that? Um, so all, um, as an administrator, you will receive an email notification when a donation is made. So you are kept up to date as to when you are receiving gifts on the platform. On the report section of your dashboard, uh, you'll have access to a lot of different reports, but all donations is gonna be your primary uh, report where you can see all the gifts that have been made on the platform. And that will be shown in real time. So you can see exactly who it was, um, you know, if you guys have other fundraisers, what it's tied to, um, et cetera. If you do want a detailed report, so you want to know, for example, the specific time that they made it, or let's say you ask, are asking an additional question or are collecting phone numbers or addresses, and you want to see that information, um, that is available in the downloaded report. So all you have to do is just download the report um, and it'll be downloaded into a CSV file. And that CSV file will have all of that detailed information. The online report is just going to show you, you know, really quick information of this is who it is and when they made it. Um, as well, if you are adding any offline gifts, you'll be able to add it um, in your on, all donations or offline donation reports. Um, you'll be able to add offline gifts through your port here. Disbursement. So when we actually uh, send the funds out related to the donations that you receive on the platform, they are sent out twice a month via EFT, so via direct deposit. So they're sent out on the 10th or the 25th of the month around those time frames, depending on the day of the week those fall under. And so though, uh, that's when you will receive donations. So if you receive donations on um, June 1st, you will receive those gifts around June 25th. Um, and then as well within the reporting area, you'll have access to disbursement details. So any previous disbursements that you received, so any times we've sent over direct deposits to your organization, you'll be able to see that there. You will receive an email notification anytime a disbursement is issued out. So you don't have to worry about, you know, when you're getting it, you'll always be notified. But what's really great about the disbursement reports is that they have a breakdown of exactly your net total. So if there's any confusion of, well, why is it this amount, you know, and you're trying to do the math, you can just go to your disbursement report and it will break down all of the donations, any fees, and then the net total and why it's that total amount. So if you have any questions with future past disbursements, always check out your disbursement breakdown in your reports. So, so it's something that's really helpful with for returning uh, Give Local NRV participants is your retention report. I love this tool. It's one of those tools that I don't think is utilized enough, be, um, but it's incredibly helpful. So this will help track down donors who donated last year to your organization on Give Local NRV, 
but have not donated yet again this year. So it's a really great way to quickly get a list of donors that you need to reach out to and get and retain back. Um, so if you need a list of people to contact, you know, head to your retention report. Um, you can do so during, you know, do this a couple of times through from June 1st to the 29th. Um, you know, start at the, maybe a couple to the first week, midway through and then at the end and see who haven't you retained back. Um, and you can download that list and then send those people an email um, saying, hey, you know, you supported our organization last year. Here's how you can make um, an impact this year for our nonprofit. If you are brand new to participating um, and this is your first year, this is something to look forward to next year and having a list of where you can see all of the donors that participated last year that um, you need to retain for this year. Um, so when you go to your retention report, there is a filter. So you can filter, um, you can pick Give Local NRV um, or the day, or if you use the platform, you know, throughout the year for any reason, then you can also track a different time period. That's totally up to you to decide, you know, what time period you want to track. But obviously for Give Local NRV, if you set it to Give Local NRV 2023, it'll then um, compare from last year. Yeah, and I'll, I'll just plug this as well. Um, if you've participated in the past, the, one of the most important things you can do is ask people who gave last year to give again. Uh, so many people will give if you just ask, and this is one of your primary groups to go for. And, and just like you said, Lisa, if you haven't um, uh, participated in the past, this report won't be available to you, but certainly um, previous donors whose information you have um, uh, that uh, in, in a, a different platform or um, a format, certainly reach out to them. They're some of the people who will, will want to su keep supporting you. Yes. All right, so we're kind of winding down to the end of the webinar. Um, so the setting section on your dashboard, this is where you can remove an ad administrator. So um, if you're returning back, this is also just a good, always, always good to um, go back to your admin section just to see who you can remove or who you need to add back. If there's been any turnover at your nonprofit, um, if you're brand new, if you wanna add anyone else as an administrator, you can go ahead and add additional people here. Um, if you need to update any legal mailing address um, or name information, you can do so here. And if you need to set up EFT direct deposit disbursements in your disbursement settings, you can update that here and add that information in. So as we mentioned in the beginning of the webinar, uh, the toolkit will provide you with lots of great resources to use like FAQs, templates, um, images, et cetera. You can also sign up for the next webinar, Strategies for a Successful Campaign. Um, so that will be Tuesday, April 11th. If for whatever reason you can't make it, there will be a recording that is provided to you. Um, just like this one, the rec this recording will be added to the toolkit, but definitely recommend uh, signing up for that one if you're interested in kind of diving more deep into peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, matching grants, all that good stuff. Um, for any questions regarding, um, you know, the uh, for uh, technical questions, you can contact support at mightycause.com. That's what we're here for. We're here to support you guys in whatever way we can. If you have any questions about, you know, image issues, any how do I add this to my about section, please feel free to contact us. We want to make sure that you guys are set up for success for the day. Um, any additional questions that are specific for um, the Community Foundation, you can reach out to Lindsay um, at her email and phone number. Um, and in addition to that, if there's, if you want to read up on a topic further, we have a really great resource library. Um, so you can go to support at mightycause.com or mightycause.com slash guide. Um, if you want to read up on you know, peer to peer fundraising, for example, we have a whole ebook on that that dives deep into that specific strategy or, you know, other uh, topics as well. All right, so I want to make sure that we get to questions because we're at the end. Um, feel free to use either the chat or the, the QA. 
um, tool if you have any further questions about the event. Hey, Lisa, this is um, Jess at the foundation. And while folks are putting any questions in the chat, um, just wanted to, to chime in again as we're talking a little bit about fees, because one thing that we hear from our nonprofits regularly is how to address if donors are um, either frustrated about the fee or to explain to them why covering the fee is helpful. Um, so just uh, again, there are fees through the Mighty Cause platform that are both credit card processing fees and fees that just support the entire giving day and the ability to use Mighty Cause. Donors don't have to cover the fees, but um, as Lisa already shared, um, it's all it's almost 90% that do. But I think for those who've been with us over the last 10 years, you'll know that um, the, you know, you, we kind of get what, what we pay for with fees. And by that, I mean the fees that we pay to Mighty Cause are what help with all the incredible support and the tools that we get. It makes for a very easy giving platform and particularly um, the support to address issues that you might have on the day of. Um, so it really does go to making the giving day everything it can be. Um, and so we just suggest to folks that if your donors really don't want to pay the fee, that is uh, why we allow that offline giving so that they can um, make sure the whole donation goes to you and give it via a check. Um, or if they give online, we encourage them to cover the fee, but they don't have to. Um, but just know that obviously we want you all to get um, the full amount of the donation, but we also want to make sure that we're providing the best product possible um, together with Mighty Cause. And so that 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 fee really helps us do that and make this giving day possible. Awesome, thanks for, for sharing a bit more about that, Jess. Um, one question that came to mind for me, Lisa, is um, you all have kind of your regular working hours that's typical of your every day of Monday through Friday, nine to five Eastern Standard Time. But during the, the giving day, can you just share a little bit more about um, the support level that um, you all offer during the day to folks? Yeah, so we have support available like 24 hours on the day of the event. So if any issue comes up, let's say, you know, 11 p.m., there's a donor that's telling you they're having issues with the platform, we're available to help facilitate any of those issues that come up. If you're having trouble with setting up a matching grant, that's what we're there for, for the day of giving. So we'll be there to support you guys and whatever you need. And I'll, I'll just shout out Mighty Cause that they're all about customer service. They, they have reports that they can pull of once a request goes in, how many minutes it took to get the request resolved. So they really want, they know that time is of a, that, that essence during a giving day event, and they're there to respond as fast as possible to you. So just want to shout out their, their great support. I well, um, I, I think not seeing any more questions. Um, I, I know I just wanted to say thank you to Lisa for um, uh, sharing her time with us today and all this great information. Um, and we'll hopefully see you all at our next webinar in April. Um, and just one, one more plug. Um, if you're thinking about um, registering this year, but still have questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, if you've registered already and you'd like to strategize or anything else, I'm here as well. So just want to share that one more time and I'll, I'll just pass it back to you, Lisa. Yes, thank you so much everyone who's attended. We'll be adding uh, a recording in the slide deck to the toolkit. So if you need to provide this to any coworkers or peers, anyone else, um, you'll have access to it um, through the toolkit. So thank you everyone for attending and let us know if you have any other follow-up questions. All right, have a great day, everyone.